you to bless them. So, Father, we thank you now, God. And God, it is our greatest desire to get the atmosphere conducive for what you are about to do, God. Bless every person, God, that's in the building. Bless every person that may be watching online, God. There's somebody that needs to hear from you, God. So, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. And right now, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And God, we decree and declare the atmosphere that we're healed. We decree and declare the atmosphere that we're restored and we're delivered. And Father, we thank you right now, God, because everything we need, God, you said in your word, if we ask in your son's name, it shall be given to us, God. So Father, in Jesus' name, we call down a fire that will dry up everything. We call down a fire that will consume everything inside of us that's not like you, God. God, we thank you, God, because we want to be changed and we want to be moving close to you, God. We want to move from faith to faith and from glory to glory, God. And whatever we bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So, Father, we loose deliverance right now. We loose deliverance right now. We loose freedom right now, God. In Jesus' name, God, we pray that right now there shall be breakthroughs taking place, God. Breakthroughs in the sanctuary. Breakthrough for every person that's watching online. We thank you, oh God. And even in spite of who we are, God, you saw fit to bless us. And you still call us by name, God. You call us unto your kingdom. And so we thank you, Jesus. Bless every person, God, that's a whole that's connected to this church, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless your name, God. And Father, we pray that right now in Jesus' name, that you move upon every road, that you move upon every heart, God, and every heart and mind. We call it in right now in the name of Jesus. We remove every distraction. We remove every proclivity. We remove every plan the enemy had to steal our worship this morning. We come to bless your name, Jesus. We come to exalt you, Jesus. Father, we pray that you send the rain, send the glory, send the power that will destroy every power ground. Send an anointing that will break the back of the enemy now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise your God. Because God, we desire to be close to you. We desire to get close to you, God. God, we want to be drawn to your presence. We want to feel your glory. We want to feel your power. We want to feel your might, God. We need you this morning, Jesus. We need you this morning, God. Oh, God, we thank you. We bless your name, God. Shift your way everywhere. Go to every heart, to every mind, God. It is our desire this morning to draw close to you. It's our desire this morning, God, to feel your presence. It's our desire this morning, God, to speak well of you, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we don't care who's not here. We thank you, God, for every person that's in the building, for every person that's logged in right now. Because we know the eyes haven't seen, the ears haven't heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men. But things you have in store for your people. So God, I pray as the worship comes forth, prepare our hearts and our minds to receive from you. God, we pray that we decrease as you increase. We decrease as you increase. We move out of the way this morning and let you have your way. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on and bless him, hallelujah. Come on and bless his name. Death could 
had it running over. And I was, as I was watching Pastor trying to stop the water from coming in, but what I heard is that's God's miracles. That's God pouring out his blessings. Pastor, you don't have room. You can't stop with whatever God has for you because you're in position. I'm telling you, there's something about being in position for whatever God has for you. And as the man of God was trying to patch up something, all I saw was God's glory letting him know you won't have room. You think you're done over here, but then God moves you over here. And you may think you got something to do in the back, but then God moves you to the front. There's something about his reign, Pastor. And as we were listening to you pray, I just see God's blessings. Whoa. There's victory. Whoa. You won't be here long because we got to move up. We got to expand. Watch how these walls come down. Whoa. There's something about when you operate in the spirit of excellence. When you give God your very best. I heard the preacher say, when you move, he'll move. And there's something about being in position. And you're not getting caught up in your potential. Because a lot of times we get caught up in our potential and we move nowhere. And we're waiting for something to happen, but God is just saying, I'm waiting for you to move. Hallelujah. And as the saints walk in, we're going to keep saying, Whoa, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, he'll send it. Come on. Put your hands together. Hey. I'll put your hands together. Come on. Put your hands together. 
Nobody greater, nobody more merciful. We love. 
thank you first of all, thank you God for saving me. Thank you God for having your hands on my life. Thank you God for making ways out of no ways. Thank you God for shifting what the enemy meant for evil and turning it around for my good. Thank you, God, for blocking what the devil tried to do this week. What he tried to do at the start of this year. To snuff out my worship, to snuff out my praise. Father, I'm thankful for life today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you, we praise you for your presence, Lord. For it is in your presence that we have the fullness of joy. It's in your presence where we are healed. It's in your presence where we are set free. It is in your presence where we are made whole again. We, God, we thank you for the anointing that's here. For it is your anointing that destroys every hill. Now, God, we don't know what your people came in with this morning. But, God, we do know that where you are, there's breakthrough. That where your spirit is, there's healing. That where your spirit resides... There's restoration. And Father, we believe that right now that your word and your power is an omnipresent power. So even those that are watching right now online, God, we know that the anointing here is spilling over through the airwaves. And every viewer that has their hand lifted, every viewer that's touching the screen, every viewer that is focused on this person, we believe that they're receiving something from you right now. Father, we pray in Jesus' name, God, that wherever they are, that you'll meet them right now, God. We bless you and we praise you. In Jesus' precious mighty name, I pray. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. We're talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're talking about the Shed and God. We're talking about the God that looks, sits high and looks low. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. Family, friends, partners, newcomers, welcome to the Fellowship Center, where we believe that every life touched is a life changed, and every life change can and will empower a nation. Thank you so much for joining our online and in-person church experience. You could have went or joined anywhere else, but you chose in the fellowship with us on this morning, and we are so delighted. We pray that you're blessed by today's worship experience, and the message will empower your life. Again, we thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We want to welcome you guys again to the Fellowship Center, and we are so happy and delighted to have you here with us. Those who are in person and those online, God is still good, and we are so happy. We know that today you are going to receive a life-changing word and a life-changing experience, and you will never be the same. So welcome again here to the Fellowship Center. At this time, we would like to um, invite you to join us during our ministry of tithing and offering. We want to just let you know that it is because of your generosity why we are able to continue to do the work that we do here at the Fellowship Center. It is because of your obedience to God and your giving why we are able to still be in the house and be able to provide the meat that is necessary for all of the people in this community, for all of our um, people that come here and are able to be blessed by the word and able to be blessed by the resources that we are able to provide. And it is all because of your giving. It is all because of your obedience with your tithing. And we want to thank you, thank you, thank you. Here at the Fellowship Center, there are three ways in which you can give in a touchless way here at the Fellowship Center. The first way is by going right to our website at www.fellowshipcenter.org, swinging right on over to the Give tab, click on the Give tab, and it will prompt you as to what to do next. The second way that you can give here at the Fellowship Center is by going to the Give the Fly app. On the Give the Fly app, you can find us 
by looking for the Fellowship Center, taking a look out for our icon, and then clicking on that, and it will prompt you as to what to do next. The third way that you can give here at the Fellowship Center is by simply going to the Cash App, and you can find us on the Cash App at dollar sign TFC New York. Again, that's dollar sign TFC N E W Y O R K. Again, we want to thank you for seating into this house because by seating into this house, I promise you, you are seating into good soil. And we want to thank you. Please join us as we pray over the seeds. Father God, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you for another day, thanking you for bringing us here this morning, God. Thanking you, God, for waking us up in our right minds, God, and just allowing us to see another day and be in your presence, God. Lord, I'm asking you that every seed that was sown into your house this morning, that you will bless it, God. You will multiply it and allow us to give us the wisdom, God, to continue to use it for the furtherance of your business, God, for the furtherance of your ministry and the work that you have for us to do here at the Fellowship Center. Lord, I'm asking you to bless every giver, God. Continue to create abundance in their home and provision in everything that they need. And Lord, those who are unable to give this morning, I'm asking you to give them a double portion of blessing, God. Lord, you know their hearts, but you also know their circumstances. But we want to remind them, God, that with you all things are possible, God. And Lord, that you are a way maker and the ultimate provider. And no matter what obstacle may come, you are the one that can break it down. And Lord, we give you all the glory and the honor and the praise for everything that you're doing, everything that you've done, and everything that you're about to do in the lives of your people. We give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you again so much for all of your giving this morning. As always, it is your giving that makes a way out of no way for us. And we thank God for all of you that continue to give. Amen. Well, I want to welcome all of you to the Fellowship Center, a multicultural, multi-generational, and multi-ethnic emerging church. Amen. I know we are socially distancing, but I need you guys to do me a favor. You could turn to the person next to you and give them an air high five. If you're sitting next to a family member, you could give them a real one. But if you don't know who you're next to, just give them an air high five and say, it's good to see you. This morning, amen, God bless you. We thank God for the anointing. The Spirit of God is here, and we thank God for all of you that made it out in the rain. Amen. There's something about the rain that just keeps people away. I don't know. You know, uh, this is so fun. I'm, I'm going to say this, but um, only because he's my son, I can say this. My son don't like water. He don't like the rain. He has an umbrella everywhere he goes. If he leaves the house and he doesn't have an umbrella, he's like kryptonite with the rain. So I'm just so excited that all of you came out. Thank you so much for pushing through in this inclement weather. Amen. And we bless all those that are watching with us online for our e-campus. Thank God for you, you, and you. And as always, we ask that you will begin to share this feed so that others who are watching can also be blessed. Amen. So we got some things we want to do this morning. We have a christening we need to do. But if you know, like I know, here at the Fellowship Center, one of the things that we operate is what's all called what? On time. We are on time. When you see it, it may be tried to duplicate it, but it's not duplicated. It's only here at TFC where you get in and out and get what you got to get for God's word. So is anybody ready for God's word? Yeah. All right, come on, let's get our Bibles. Turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter number 15. 1 Samuel chapter number 15, starting at verse number 22. Uh, let's start with that. First Samuel chapter number 15. Starting at, actually, let's start at, yeah, let's we'll start at verse 22. 15 chapter, chapter 15, verse 22. If you have it, please stand over the building. If not, amen, we ask that you will get close to someone that's a family member. Again, we are socially distancing. Amen. And we're still maintaining all of the CDC guidelines as best we can. Uh, because we know that this variant is still relevant. Amen. All right, so that's 1 Samuel chapter number 15, verse 22. Here's what the Bible says. It says, and Samuel had, are you there? And Samuel said, had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as is obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice 
and to hearken than the fat of rams. Verse number 20, 23 says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he had also rejected thee from be, being king. Now let's jump over to Philippians chapter number 3. Philippians chapter number 3. We're going to go to verse number 12. It says, Not as though I have already attained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that which is also I am apprehending of Jesus Christ. Verse number 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Verse 14. I press towards the mark of the prize of a high calling in Christ Jesus. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Family, in our time together, I want to teach from the subject topic for the next 20 minutes or so. Shake it off. Shake it off. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you, God, for this time of your presence. We pray, God, that as we stand behind this sacred desk, anoint my lips of clay, let no flesh get glory. As I minister your word, let your people be edified. Let the enemy be horrified. But most importantly, let you be glorified. Father, it's our greatest desire today that someone will hear this word and they will be empowered through your word. And God, we don't desire to pump up, excite, or move anyone's emotion. But our greatest desire, Father, is to build the kingdom and to build your people. So, Father, I pray this morning that someone will leave here empowered, encouraged, and pushed towards purpose and destiny. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Shake it off. Now, to all the young people in the building, I got to say, I did not get this subject topic from Taylor Swift. I need to put a disclaimer out there before we get started. But uh, I got this message this morning because God was dealing with me with the importance of shaking things off. And my desire today is, as we begin to unpack this message, that you begin to really fully see exactly the origins of this sermon. Amen? So family, I preface this teaching this morning. Uh, by saying this message, I want to be very clear, it's not going to be for everybody. I don't think everyone is going to be drawn in. I don't think everyone is going to be a recipient of this message this morning. Listen to this. For those of you who enjoy remaining at the same place that you have always been emotionally, that you've always been spiritually, that you've always been economically, that you've always been socially, that you've always been relationally, at the start of this year, I want you to know if that's you, the message is not for you. For those of you who like to dwell in places and in spaces where God has already delivered or brought you out of, I want you to know this morning that the message is not for you. For those of you who keep going back to people and to things that has a precedent of not adding value or improving your life, I want you to know, family, if that's you this morning, this message may not necessarily be for you. Or for those of you who like to sit around the big screen with your life on the board, with your popcorn and your soda and your Kleenex towels and like to have a pity party over all that has happened in your life. I want you to know, family, this morning, if that's you, the message today is not for you. This message this morning is for those of you and those individuals, whether you are in the building or watching with us online, who have been at the same place emotionally, spiritually, and financially. And you're saying, God, I need something to change. God, I can no longer stay at this place because where I am, I'm not growing. Where I am, I don't see that my life is advancing. Where I am, I see that I'm consistently confronted with the same problems, the same issues, the same people. God, I'm ready for change. 
If that's you this morning, I want you to know that this message is for you. You're saying to yourself, God, I don't want to keep living in a cycle of pain. I'm ready to get rid of all this pain. In fact, God, I'm ready to start dreaming again. In fact, God, I'm ready to start seeing prosperity in my business. I'm ready to start seeing breakthrough in my relationships. I'm ready to start seeing healing in my body. I'm ready to start seeing my ministry come into contact with greatness. I'm ready to start seeing my career take off. Family, if that's you this morning, I want you to know that this message is for you. For those of you that said, God, I'm ready to step out today and start living my best life. I'm ready to step out today and start living in purpose. I don't want to just live, God. I'm ready today to start living with an agenda that's a kingdom assignment agenda that will always lead me into your full promises. If that's you this morning, family, I want you to know this message is for you. And before I go any further, I got to make a declaration because if you have gravitated to that introduction and you have received that, you have now related to the fact that this message may just be for you. I want you to know it comes with a disclaimer. In order to fully receive this message, you got to know this one that God said in order for you to be a recipient of your breakthrough, in order for you to be a recipient of your prosperity, in order for you to be a recipient of your healing, in order for you to be a recipient of your business taking on, you got to know there's some things you got to shake off you. There's some things that you got to shake off you. Why? Because the things that you have on you, they actually have been holding you back. They've been keeping you from progressing in life. And this morning, I need to know, is there anybody here that's ready to shake some things off? tired of having the same things in your life all the time you're ready to do like jay-z said i want to dust my shoulders off and get rid of these things that have been plaguing me right now you know family as i get older i'm discovering how important it is to learn how to release things in my heart that have been holding me back I'm learning that there have been some experiences and encounters that I've had that have directly contributed to my inability to grow. And as a result of that, it has caused me to walk around with a damaged heart. It has caused me to walk around with a heart that has been wounded, a heart that has been broken. And there were times in my life because of these wounds and the trauma as a result of these wounds, I wasn't able to move forward to where God wanted me to be. The Bible teaches us in Luke chapter number, chapter number 6 verse 45, it says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. In other words, family, your heart, according to this text, is symbolic of a repository that contains the issues of your life and the issues of your life are flowing through this repository. So all of you that have been exposed to anything in the medical profession, you know that your heart does what? It causes your blood to circulate through your body. So what I'm saying to you, if God says out of the heart flows the issues of life, what that means is that sometimes if your heart has been contaminated, it quite possibly can be poisoning you and you don't even know it. Jesus. Did you hear what I just said? So whatever we permit to come and reside into our hearts or to take up residency in our heart, don't miss this, it will have a direct impact on what you speak, it will have a direct impact on what you believe, and it will also influence how far in life you go. Are you with me? I found out that there were pockets of time in my journey towards becoming my best self that the enemy tried to tempt me by speaking failure into my own life. And that's why the Bible says you have to be careful of what you release out your mouth. Because sometimes, unbeknownst of yourself, you can be speaking failure over yourself and not even know it. What are you talking about, Pastor? When you think that you can't do it. 
when you think that you can't make it. Well, I'm just thinking about it. The Bible says what? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the what? The renewing of your mind. So what that means? That means if a man thinketh, so is he. So you may not necessarily have to release the words, but if you're thinking about it, it's possible that word can take root. It's possible that you can be sabotaging your own purpose and destiny simply because you've allowed your heart to embrace something that God says is not true. So what I've discovered, family, is that there were times in my life when I allowed the enemy to make me speak things negatively over who I was. And I began to speak failure about my life because I found myself struggling with guilt about things that I've done. Guilt about mistakes that I've made. Guilt about people that I've hurt. Decisions and choices that I've made that netted me an unfavorable result. But God had to help me get to the place where I learned to forgive myself. So that I will be able to receive what he has for me. In other words, God had to get me to the place where I learned to shake some things off. Did you hear what I just said? He had to get me to a place where I learned to shake off some things in my life. Have you ever, family, have you ever considered how much time you spend trying to reconcile the mistakes you made in your past? How much energy you exhaust trying to figure out how do I deal with the skeletons in my closet? And the skeletons in my closet, what they represent? They represent my past. You spend so much time rehearsing your history and you never take the time to plan for your future. So you are so dedicated to the mistakes and the failures that you made that you never put equal vested time into your future. You're focused lamenting over what I didn't do, choices I made bad, people I hurt. But God is saying, if I delivered you from it, why are you lamenting in it? You don't realize that you are causing yourself to sink further and further in life. And that's why God said this morning, you have to get to the place where you are able to shake some things off of you. Listen to this. People often derail and sabotage their own destiny simply because they've allowed their past to become the drivers of their final destination. Did you hear what I just said? People sabotage their own future because they let their past drive them everywhere they go. And God says you need to stop that. Because you don't realize that you're driving yourself off a cliff. When God said I've already given you a lifeline. All you need to do is receive what I've done. And walk in the healing. But because the enemy makes us feel. That we have to be prisoners to our past and our mistakes. We continue to walk around in festering information, festering issues that have caused trauma in our lives. And now we're living, but we're not living on purpose. We're just living or just existing, but there's no purpose to our existence. Are you with me? That is why, fam, you have to recognize the importance of shaking some things off you. And I believe this is a design and a plan of the enemy. Why? Because the enemy wants God's people. Don't miss this. The enemy wants God's people to always live in a cycle. And, and I taught about this last, in, in 2019, about the importance of cycle. Differentiating between cycles and season. What you need to know is that God doesn't want us to live in cycles. God wants us to live through seasons. Say with me. Don't miss this. The enemy wants us to live in cycles. Why? Because cycles don't have exits. Cycles are perpetual. It's like a, a, a hamster on a treadmill. That hamster not getting off. I don't care how much that hamster decides to get off that. He can't get off the treadmill. Why? Until you go and take him off. Because it's living in a cycle. The enemy wants us to live in cycles. And what you need to know, cycles are demonic in nature. 
Because their whole purpose is to keep you repeating the same mistakes over and over again. But listen to this. Don't miss this. God wants us to live through seasons. When you talk about passing, that's why God said to everything is what? There is a season. Because God says if you live through seasons, you always come out. But if you stay in a cycle, you'll never find an exit sign. So you need to know that the enemy doesn't want you to live in seasons because he knows that a cycle will keep you in a perpetual state of failure. Did you hear what I just said? So he knows that as long as I keep Tobias, as long as I keep Trina, as long as I keep Brother Keith living in the pains and the mistakes of their past, they'll never know that I already made an exit for them. But if they stay there, all they're going to do is keep repeating the same mistakes. So I pose the question with the utmost humility. Who in the building is living in sight? Who in the building keeps repeating the same thing over and over again? Who in the building doesn't learn from how they make poor investments in their life? Who in the building doesn't realize you make the same mistakes in your marriage? You make the same mistakes in your relationship? You make the same mistakes when you make friends? Are you living in a cycle? Because people who are living through seasons, they know that there's a purpose behind the season. There's a purpose behind experiencing it. Why? Because you know God said that at the end of the day, you are going to come out of whatever you're in. But don't miss this, family. The enemy knows so as long as you continue to relive a cycle, he knows that he can rob you of everything. And that's why the Bible said he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy your life. Because he knows as long as I keep you in a place where you are always dealing with depression, always dealing with anger, always dealing with anxiety, which are things that are contrary to the identity of a kingdom citizen, now he can rob you of your joy. Now he can rob you of your freedom. Now he can rob you of your peace. Why? Because you don't even know that God delivered you and you're staying at the place exactly where he wants you to be. But God says, you have to live through seasons. And that's why you have to shake off some things. Because if you don't shake it off, you're going to potentially cause yourself to live in a cycle. And, and, and what I found through this text is that this is what the Apostle Paul was trying to teach the body of Christ in the text this morning. He wanted to call their attention to the potential fit pitfalls associated to one's inability to bounce back from the things that the enemy has caused you to keep reliving from your past. Did you hear what I just said? So he wants you to keep doing that. The enemy doesn't want you to bounce back from your past because he knows I, if I keep him there, if I keep her there, they're going to forget who they are. If, if I keep her reliving in his mistakes, if I keep her reliving in her mistakes, she will never know what freedom looks like. So the enemy wants us to stay at a place where we're bound because he knows that if we keep up there, he can rob us of our future. He can rob us of our purpose. Why? Because we've accepted and embraced an ideology that says I'm no better than what I used to be. Did you hear what I just said? He keeps us, he keeps us where we have an ideology that says my father was a failure, my brother was a failure, my brother's marriage failed, my, my aunt's marriage failed, uh, my mother was never successful. He keeps us repeating and reliving those things. And so what do we do? We take it with us into our future and it becomes the very thing that starts to define us. And that's why I said you cannot let your past be the driver of your final destination. Because the enemy wants you to accept what you've been through. But God said, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And let me tell you this. Don't you know that freedom is also a state of mind? Did you hear what I just said? Freedom is not only something that you embrace spiritually, but you have to mentally and emotionally adopt a mindset that I'm free. So, so in other words, whenever an alcoholic go to AA meetings, the first thing they teach the alcoholic is to accept and embrace what they are, right? The reason why they do that is because they want them to realize that what they're dealing with is real. 
but they don't need to stay there. Did you hear what I just said? So in other words, yes, you may have experienced some difficult things in your past, but you don't need to stay there. You have to shake off those things because those things are weights that's keeping you from seeing your best life. That's why God said you have to shake it off. Because in order to position you to your winning season, there are some things in your life that you got to shake off. And unfortunately, family, many of us have not shaken some things off. Many of us have actually dug a hole and got deeper into the things that we're dealing with. Many of us have allowed those things to form an insulated cocoon around us. And all we do is bounce around the pain of our past. And God said this morning, I can never introduce you to the breakthrough and the winning season that I have for you if you don't realize that you got to shake that off your life. You have to shake that off you. And family, you have to learn the importance of moving forward because if you don't, you'll end up standing still and falling behind in life. And here it is, don't miss this, people can become so complacent where they are in their life that they become comfortable with the emotional stimulation that they get by rehearsing their past. So, so what do I mean by that? There are some people that like to be on a pity party. There are some people that like to always live in the pain of their past. Don't miss this. Because the enemy got them to a place where the emotional stimulation of that pain actually is euphoria for them. Mm, did you hear what I just said? Have you ever met a person that you always see that they keep talking about what happened to them? Every time you talk to them, it's like 10 minutes in the conversation. What do they do? They go right back to what happened to them. And what happens is the enemy has brought them to a place mentally where that feeling that they get is actually stimulating them. And God said that you have to get beyond the place where you're letting the pain of your past become a rehearsal in your life because all it's doing is destroying you. God can't grow you to your next level if all you do is focus on where you've been. I'm not saying don't forget about what you've been through. But what I am saying, that can't be your final destination. At what point do you want more for yourself? At what point do you want to experience deliverance? At what point do you want to experience breakthrough? At what point do you realize that if I keep doing the same thing, I'm going to get the same results? In the professional intellectual field, that's called insanity. Doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different result. I don't care how much you try to get a different result. If you keep doing the same thing, you're going to get the same response. And family, you don't realize you've introduced yourself to a cycle and the enemy has a grip on you if that's your mentality. Are you with me? Everybody has to get to the place where they're moving forward in life. Because if you're not at a place where you're moving forward in life, you're not going to be positioned to win. And that is why it's so consequential that you have to shake some things off you. Because the things that you have yet to shake off you are things that the enemy is using as cancer in your life. So you don't realize that it has become malignant and it's spreading to parts of your life unbeknownst to you but eventually you're going to start to see that wait a second I never really suffered from depression but now I'm suffering from it wait a second that thing never triggered me before but now it's triggering me you don't even realize that because you didn't shake some things off you from your past it metastasized and now it's everywhere in your life and so it's blocking you from becoming greater and you're wondering why you can't get over to the next level. It's because you never shook some things off you. And Paul recognized this as a possible outcome as a result of kingdom citizens. 
So what did Paul do? Paul appealed to the body of Christ in verse 13. He says this. He said, forget those things which are behind you. And reach forth to those things which are before you. Family, what Paul is trying to get the church to understand is that it's absolutely consequential for your success, for your personal and spiritual growth and your development that you learn to shake some things off you because they will hinder you from progressing in your life. Things like past hurt, past failure, past disappointments, past setback. Paul wanted every kingdom citizen to realize that you have to shake it off in order to set it off. You have to shake it off in order to set it off. In other words, you have to get to the point where those old places emotionally, those old people don't have the same influence over your life anymore. And now you're ready to experience something new. Family, what I need you to know this morning is that is a recipe that will introduce you to the success that you've been asking God for Amen. in your life. Unfortunately, many people have become trapped and they haven't shaken off some of the issues from their past. We allow those situations and those circumstances to fester in our life for many years to the point where we're no longer able to hear from God. We don't, we don't know God's voice even if he called us and he was sitting right by us. We don't even understand what God's voice sounds like. Why? Because we've allowed those things to fester so much to where they drown God out. They drown God out of your life and now you can't even get to your next level because you can't even hear the instructions to get there. Is this making any sense to you? God is saying that if you want to get further in life, you got to shake some things off. So in effect, we allow the enemy to weaponize our pain and use it as a platform to destroy our future. Did you hear what I just said? The enemy weaponize your pain against you and use it as a platform to destroy your future. So what happens as a result of that? We become confused about our identity. We become confused about who we are. We become confused about our purpose. We become confused about the direction that God is taking us in our lives. That's what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter number 55 verse 3. It says, incline your ear and come to me here that your soul may live and I will make you an everlasting covenant. Here it is. Don't miss this. Stop allowing your inability to shake things off your life from becoming a justification for the enemy to keep you trapped in a cycle. Did you hear what I just said? Oh, that's worth repeating. Stop allowing the enemy from taking your inability to shake off some things in your life and using it as something that keeps you living in a cycle. In other words, when are you going to let go and let God? When are you going to turn it over to God so he can heal you? When are you going to turn it over to God so that he can restore you? When are you going to turn it over to God so that he can show you that what the devil meant for your evil, I'm going to turn it around for your good. That's why the Bible says all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. So don't you know that's why God telling us right now that your pain has a purpose. But its purpose is not to keep you trapped. Its purpose is to grow you in an area where you don't realize God wants to strengthen you in. Listen to this. And don't miss this. I'm not saying that what happened to you or what was done to you was not wrong. But what I am saying is, don't allow that situation to impact your life to the degree where you don't want to live. What are you talking about, Pastor? I, I, I don't feel like committing suicide. I don't feel like doing anything to hurt myself. No, that's not what I mean. You don't want to take any chances on life. You don't think that you can love again. 
You don't think that you can experience success in your career? You don't think that you can reach the epitome of being a CEO or CFO of a company or your own company? The enemy gets us to a place where we don't want to dream again simply because there's some things that we need to shake off. So what I'm saying to you, don't let that impact your life. Yes, you went through it. But God says you don't need to stay there. God can't heal, and don't miss this, God can never heal us in a place that we're not willing to reveal to him. Did you hear what I just said? God cannot heal you in a place where you're not revealing it to him. So what does that mean? Don't think that you can say, God, heal me, and God's saying, like the person in AA meeting, do you know what's wrong with you? Do you know that you're dealing with a lying tongue? Do you know that you keep going back to things that break you and hurt you? Do you know that you keep making the same mistake? God cannot heal you unless you reveal the area where you want him to heal you. And what I mean by that is when you identify and you make it known to God that God, yes, I need to be dealt with this area. Now what does he do? He takes you to his word. And he gives you the precepts and the principles you need so that he can build you in that area. But if you won't reveal it, God can't heal it. If you won't reveal it, God is not going to be able to restore you. If you won't reveal it, you're going to keep staying here. And that's why I'm saying, family, you got to shake those things off you. God wants to introduce you to your best days. But if you don't shake it off, you're going to stay right there. And Jesus came to free us from the things that are holding us back. Jesus came to restore us from the things that the enemy is banking on you believing that it can stay there and not ever get dealt with. Did you hear what I just said? He's banking on the fact that you think if I don't talk about it, it doesn't exist. If I don't say that it's real, it's not me. Don't you know you're lying to yourself? But more importantly, you are creating a festing ground for the enemy to begin to multiply destruction in your life. All because you are unwilling to shake off those things. That's why the Bible says, therefore, my beloved, if any man be in Christ, what? He is a new creature. All things have passed away and behold, all things are made new. Your newness begins the day that you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, but it doesn't stop there. Now you have to apply the precepts and principles of Scripture to your life so that it can rewrite the definition that the world has placed on you. So when the enemy recognizes that you just want to wallow in everything that you're in, you want to stay in a state of depression. You want to stay at a place where you're not living in abundance. He's happy. Because all you're doing is creating an opportunity for him to keep destroying your life. And that's why I say, family, this morning, you have to shake some things off you. Turn it over to God. Release it to him. So that he can bring you into your purpose. Paul was dealing with this with the church because he realized that the people who struggle the most with shaking things off are, are kingdom citizens. People that know God have the most difficulty shaking things off. You know why? And I'm going to say this because it needs to be said. Because for whatever reason, we as kingdom citizens like to see the world get free, but we think that we don't need to be free. We like to see everybody else walking into greatness, but we think that God wants us to struggle all the time. We like to see everybody walking in abundance, but we think God wants us to stay in a place of poverty. I want you to know that is a lie from the enemy. The Bible says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou will prosper even as your soul prosper and be in good health. I'm going to break it down. Prosperity and good health. 
prospering in everything that you do, life, marriage, relationship, business, health, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. God said all of that is applicable and only the kingdom citizens that we got to stay like this. Jesus. God, I'm going to struggle forever, God. God said, no, no. Shake that spirit off you and walk into the greatness that I have for you because you are not representing me. The world should be living better than us. What are you talking about, Pastor? Why do you think God said his word? And I go through so profound minister. It's better to be a lender than a borrower. Is that not God telling us that prosperity belongs to us? Right. I'm going to tell you right now, if a bank need a loan, they're not coming to you. <laughs> if a bank need a loan, you're going to them. Why? Because they're in a position to lend. My God. So what am I saying to you? When you shake off a mentality that you don't need and deserve more, you're going to stay at that place. But God says... I need to know where are the people that are ready to shake off some mentalities, that are ready to shake off some things in their life and walk in the abundance of God that's synonymous with who you are as a kingdom citizen. You deserve more. You're supposed to have more. God wants you to be at a place of more. So Paul says, forget those things and move forward. Basically, he's saying, shake it off. You know what your it is. God says, shake it off. How long are you going to fester over that failed relationship? Shake it off. How long are you going to stay at a place where you don't think that you deserve better? God says, shake it off. How long are you going to allow people to keep telling you that you'll never make it? God says, shake it off. Shake off the mentality that says you are a failure. Shake off the ideology that says you can't get better. Shake off the mindset that says that you're going to be like your mother, your father, if they were in a place of failure. God said shake off that identity and walk into who you are. You've been fearfully and wonderfully made in his image and his likeness. And he has more for you. He has so much more for you. But you have to shake off all those things. Yes, I may have made some mistakes in my life, but I'm going to shake it off. Yes, I may have made some poor decisions, but I'm going to shake it off. Yes, I may have done some of the things that people accuse me of, but I'm going to shake it off. Yes, my marriage might have failed, but I'm going to shake it off. Yes, I may not have gotten that job, but God got something better, so I'm going to shake it off. Yes. It's all about your perspective of who you are as a kingdom citizen. And God says, in order for you to get into the winning season, you're going to have to shake some things off. And for too long, we haven't shaken some things off. I started this message by saying I didn't get it from Taylor Swift. But I was listening to the song. <laughs> Y'all forgive me, I'm still saying. But there were some lyrics in the song that resonated with me. She said, that's what people say, mm-mm. Right? But she said, I keep moving can't stop, won't stop moving because she got to get better, right? And then she said, players are going to hate, haters are going to hate, but I shake it off. So in other words, young people and everyone in the building, she letting you know there's some things you just got to shake off. Because people going to say what they want to say, but just shake it off. You are failure, it's all right, I'm going to shake that off. You're going to be just like that, I'm going to shake that off. Because when you get the mindset that you can't let labels and definition attach to you, you learn how to shake those things off. God says, family, this morning, breakthrough has come to your house. But you have to shake some things off. As I said at the very beginning, 
This message will only resonate with those that are tired of being at a place of stagnation. I want you to think about your life. What haven't you shaken off? And sometimes it's going to require you to get to a place where you're unpacking your life. Because there's some things deeply rooted in you that you need to get to in order to shake it off. And it's going to require counseling. It's going to require you sitting down with some people who are skilled at helping you unpack this. But listen to this. Don't miss this. Don't ever think that God does not want you to live in freedom. That's why you have to shake it off. I'm closing. You know, as I was preparing for this message, there were, there's this statement that's out there in the public world. And, and it's used in a lot of professions. And, and I'm not a clinician. I'm not a therapist. I'm a certified life coach, certified counselor. But most importantly, I'm a man of God, and I know God's word. I know the power of God's word. But I want to clarify something for just kingdom citizen. Everybody not going to receive this, but I'm going to tell you today, and you take it home if you want. There's this statement that says, it's okay to not be okay. You heard that before? It's okay to not be okay. And what I want to say, there's some truth behind that. But you got to understand the context of where that's acceptable. It's okay to not be okay from the perspective of when you need help, you need to get help. Wherever it is. But don't miss this. It's not okay to stay at a place where you're not okay. Did you hear what I just said? And for the believer, you need to know God doesn't want you to stay at a place where you're not okay. What did he say in his word? I come to heal and to restore. By his stripes we're healed. So when you accept that the enemy wants you to stay at a place where you're not okay all the time, that is problematic. God says, yes, it's okay to not be okay. But it's not okay to stay there. What are you doing to work towards your healing? And for the believer, I want to say to you, God wants you to walk in abundance. That's why you got to shake some things off you. Because if you don't shake them off, it's going to become a cycle. And it will become perpetual in your life. But I'm going to leave you with this. Don't walk around another day of your life not looking to shake some things off you that have been there. Because if you don't, I promise you, you may not see it now. You may not feel it right now. But I promise you, the enemy is going to allow that thing to spread and seep into areas of your life where you are going to always be at a state of stagnation. Simply because you didn't shake those things off you. But God said today, embrace this message. Shake some things off your life. Get the help. Reach out to your leadership. Reach out to your pastor. Reach out to those who are still clinically at a place where they can help you get free of some of those things. Get to the house of God. Because God said he wants you to walk in that freedom. If you receive that word, come on, put your hands together. Amen. We're going to do this. Amen. We're going to ask that everyone get ready. We're going to do a christening now. Uh, did you receive that word this morning? If you receive that word, come on, just give God some round of applause. Amen. I just want to pray real quick with you, but as we're praying, I want you to get yourself ready. Amen. We want to do this and bless the children that are here. Father, we thank you. We praise you, God, for all that you've done. Thank you, God, for this word today. I pray, God, that we walk in this freedom. We walk in this restoration. That we shake some things off us. That the enemy has been using to keep us back. I thank you, God, for every person that has received this word today. That will walk in that freedom. 
Father, help us to shake some things off us. Help us to get to the place where we can extract the precepts and principles of your word to our lives and begin to be healed. We thank you and we praise you for all that you've done. And Father, we believe that we're walking in that freedom. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We're going to ask that we get ourselves ready for, we're going to christen. Um, so my niece, we're going to christen a young lady here this morning. I'm going to ask that the family comes forward. Amen. The parents, godparents, guardians, we ask that you all come forward. says they brought young children to Christ that he should touch them and his disciples rebuked those that brought them but when Jesus saw it he said he was much displeased he said unto them suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not for of such is the kingdom of God verily I say unto you whoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. Dear beloved, the divine human task of developing and delivering and pushing our children from birth to Christ is of utmost responsibility. All the sight and sounds that play upon the sensations and the sensitive of our children are very important. The love of the home affects the child. The parents affect the child. As the children grow, he or she may receive the spiritual life of the parents of those that are connected to them. The religious conversations that mothers have with their children and fathers have with their children are absolutely essential for that child's success. It will make them a better person. It will help to grow their life. God will have access to these children by way of these doors that parents open in their lives. And it's so important that we know as parents, friends, and family members that we stay connected to them in a way that pushes them towards the kingdom. All right, we have her here. Right now, I just need, who are the guardians for parents? you to give her to them. Do you, as parents, promise to pray for and with this child for her growth in knowledge of God and in spiritual life? Answer by saying we do. Do you promise to train this child in the body of Christ, in mind and soul, for service and fellowship with God? Answer by saying we do. Do you promise to do all you can to lead her at the proper age to confess her faith in Christ? Answer by saying we do. What is her child's name? Full name. <laughs> Okay, Ava, Princess Lambert. Let us pray. Our Lord, gracious and merciful God, grant us thy blessing as we wait before thee. Teach thy, teach us thy way, O Lord. Sanctify 
us today. Sanctify these parents and this home. Help them to see in this child an opportunity for her to be for your kingdom. Help them to see in this child an opportunity for her to grow according to your admiration and your word. I pray, God, that you will allow this child to grow and to be everything that you purpose her to be. Everything that you desire her to be. I pray that they will create a home where she can develop spiritually. She can develop emotionally. That she can develop and become everything that you purpose her to be in life. I pray that they will create a home that she will always be able to know who you are. We thank you and we praise you, Lord. Above all, God, I pray that your hand will remain on her life. And you will cover her and protect her from every attack of the enemy. God, we cancel every generational curse. We cancel every attack the enemy may send her way. We pray that you will rear her in your word, God. And help her to grow more and closer to you. We thank you and we praise you, God, for all that you've done. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. So we know that this is a christening and not a baptism, right? So a baptism for her will come later on in life where she makes her own confession of a relationship with Christ. But today, we're going to dedicate her to the Lord and pray that God's hand will be on her life. She's ready to grab the mic. So I'm going to dedicate you. You're the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you for this life, for this vessel. Thank you, God, because she's so beautiful. She's going to do so many great things for you, Lord. I pray, God, that you just continue to encamp your angels around you. We come against every plan that we ask for, Lord. Allow your angels to guide her, to cover her. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. All right, so at this time, I'm going to also talk to godparents. Who are godparents? Everybody? Oh, that's good. It takes a village. That's good. You know, one of the things about godparenting um, that's very important to know is that uh, a lot of times with godparents that I found, sometimes godparents think that their roles are not important, but their roles are very important because... You're saying that you are going to stand proxy of the parents when the parents can be there. So that means that there are times where she may come to you guys and talk to you about things that she can't talk to them. But she wants to be able to know that she has a safe place with you. What's also important for godparents to know is that we don't want the children to experience a contradiction when they come in your presence. What do I mean by that? Well, when they're around you, when she's around you, she cannot see something different than she see with her own parents. An environment that's totally different. Why? Because that's a conflict of interest. You're giving her a wrong message. So I'm going to encourage you as godparents to make sure that no matter what you do, try your best to ensure that whenever she's in your presence, that at the very least, you are representing her parents as best you can when you're with her. So that when she sees you and when she's with you, she's not confused about anything. She doesn't see two different type of lifestyle. Yes, you're not the same. But when she's around you, she can't be so confused to the point where she doesn't realize that you're connected to her parents. Amen? I'm going to just anoint all the parents now. Anoint all the godparents. 
then we're done. Oops. Are you? Okay. Who's the doctor? I thought everybody was here to talk now. Are you? Okay. God bless you. Certificate. This is to cer this is to certify that Ava Princess Lambert was dedicated to God on Sunday, July twenty fifth, twenty twenty one, at the Fellowship Center in Baldwin, New York. It will be signed by the parent guardian Kareen White, the parent guardian Trelawney Nichols, the officiant Pastor Tobias Hall and the witness, Executive Administrator, Trina Hall. Congratulations. Amen. Come on, everyone. Have hearts and minds. Everyone give God a round of applause. Have all hearts and minds are clear. Yes, everyone may stand. Amen. We're going to be moving forward. We thank God for all of you being here today. Amen. We pray that this was such a blessing today for you. The service was a blessing. And we just believe that God moved in a mighty way today. Uh, my prayer is that all of you were blessed by the word. And I know that Ava received something today. She wanted to grab the mic. <laughs> um, I pray that you all are blessed. And we thank God for all of you in the building, all of our viewers. Thank God for being with us today. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time in your presence. We thank you, God, for everything that you've done. And Father, we pray that you continue to bless your people. And Father, as we leave this place, but never your presence, go before us and camp your angels around us. Tonight, give us a night of rest. And tomorrow, a great day of victory. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you all for coming out today. I pray that you enjoyed the message. Amen. Please stay connected to us on social media and our website for all upcoming announcements. We thank God for all of you. Have a blessed and wonderful day.